This video was brought to you by NCIX. Great technology, selection, and service. Hello everyone, this is Ebar with Hardware Canucks, and gamers today have so many options to choose the right device for your budget and your preference. One of the latest gaming mice from Cooler Master is the CM Storm Bazaar, rocking a straightforward, ergonomic, and attractive design that most users will not ignore. Retailing for just $60, CM Storm is aiming at the mid-tier bracket, so let's see if it's worth it. The initial impressions indicate an OK build quality. It has a very familiar feel to the SteelSeries rival gaming mouse with a familiar shape and even the sight coating is almost the same. Everything is plastic and given the light form, our perception of quality can be skewed. At only 100 grams, the Mazar is one of the lightest mice that I've used so far, yet with a well-balanced weight distribution. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with customizable weights to suit the user's need and personally, a heavier mouse would have suited my style slightly better. Ergonomically, it's well-shaped. The textured grips on the left and right side of the mouse complement a secure grip while offering a pleasant handling experience. The curvature of the right side provide enough support for side fingers and a slight curve for your thumb to sit the right place. Nice. The Teflon feet at the bottom provide a smooth glide without any signs of peeling, and that was great to see given our recent experience with the G502 from Logitech. The Mazar is equipped with the latest Avago 9800 laser sensor which does seem to be hitting a lot of mice these days. Tracking was as expected, no issues on white surfaces nor on glass. The sensor can go all the way up to 8200 dpi, still unusable for most gaming situations, even for higher resolution displays. But I enjoyed my usual 1600 to 1800 dpi setting. There are seven programmable buttons on the Mazar. The Omron switches on the left and right primary buttons are not heavy and quick presses are easy to do. The scroll wheel, on the other hand, required a lot of pressure to click, which made it difficult to use in-game. Plus, the scroll steps are really light, so they are not as defined as they should be. The DPI shift buttons right behind the scroll wheel are easy to reach with your middle finger, and the two buttons sitting on the left side of the mouse are nicely placed for quick use by your thumb. Actuations come to a hard stop on these side buttons, requiring slight tightening of the grip in order to keep in line with your aim, so keep that in mind. The cable is braided and it comes with proper logo on the tip to help differentiate between other cables that you may have plugged in. The Mazar has customizable LED options that is multicolored and there are two separate lighting zones which includes logo at the back and the scroll wheel along with the DPI shift buttons. Unfortunately, the only zone that you can customize is the color of the logo with seven colors to choose from. It is somewhat limiting but at least the lighting of the logo is uniform. The software looks pretty clean with six different tabs that are organized appropriately and you can store up to four different profiles thanks to the built-in memory of the mouse. You are greeted with the main tab that essentially displays all the seven programmable buttons which you can customize to your preference. The advanced tab helps you tweak around with the different DPS settings of up to four steps and you can customize the LEDs with seven colors with the LED brightness, the sensitivity, double clicking speed and the button response time. The macro tab essentially helps you record macros and assign them to seven programmable buttons and of course you do have the option to create, load, delete and save different profiles. And so it's conclusion time. The ergonomically shaped design should suit many gamers. The laser tracking is different from optical sensors but nevertheless it's accurate. On the fly DPI change and excellent Omron switches make for one enjoyable mouse to use. The driver software is complete with all the customization you need and the LED lighting is a nice touch for the price. The only negative we can mention in this price bracket is the scroll wheel that was just too difficult to press with really weak scroll steps that wasn't comfortable to use for gaming. Also, we can't have it all but the mouse is fairly light and the lack of weight customization means you'll have to adjust to the light form. At the end of the day, the Mazar doesn't disappoint at all for the price and should not be overlooked if you're on the market for one and we are giving it the Howard Canucks Damn Good Value Award. Although if optical mice are your thing, check out the following reviews of the G502, a few Myonix mice and the SteelSeries rival that would help you narrow down your best option for your price range. And let us know in the comments section down below what mouse you are currently using. Are you rocking a laser or an optical sensor? As always, don't forget to subscribe for more similar content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.